To answer that question, it's necessary to discuss the individuals who um, influenced his thinking about politics and culture and society. And the key figure uh, among those influences in, in Beard's mental development was John Ruskin. Uh, this is ironic in a way, because Ruskin was a uh, very conservative um, art historian and social critic. One would think that uh, uh, these two men would not have a lot in common, but the young Charles Beard is a student at DePauw University in Indiana in the 1890s, read um, Ruskin's Unto This Last, an 1862 book, um, which is one of the foremost um, uh, publications of that period dealing with social criticism, criticizing the modern world from really conservative cultural premises. It's a fascinating book. Uh, Beard read it as a student and fell in love with it. He, he thought it was the most profound book that he'd read up to that point. And it was a book that stayed with him. Um, and, and the argument in Ruskin's Unto This Last that made the most uh, lasting impression on Beard was that modern industrial society is producing a soulless, materialistic civilization. And, and that as modern industrial society spreads through modernization throughout the Western world, including the United States, as this, this, this storm cloud, as he referred to it in another book, as this storm cloud spreads and envelops the world, Western civilization will be destroyed at its roots. Its soul will be eviscerated. And, and B, B, young B was probably 19 or 20 when he read that book. And it, it, it inflamed his imagination and his mind. Um, his wife, Mary Ritterbeard, who, with whom he collaborated on some of his most important books, wrote in her biography of him after he had died, that nothing influenced Beard as much as John Ruskin's under this last. It, it was the book that defined him. Now, the question, of course, then arises, well, why didn't Beard become a conservative, a cultural conservative, the way uh, uh, John Ruskin uh, had, 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 had taught his, uh, his readers to be? Uh, well, uh, the second person who helped to shape uh, Beard's understanding of um, what society should, should be aiming for in order to produce a vital civilization, in order to, to, to improve, to use John Quincy Adams's phrase, to improve uh, the well-being of the, 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 those who are parties to the social compact, that famous phrase of his. Um, what what, um, what, what uh, John Atkinson Hobson argued in also praising Ruskin's ideas, his critical ideas, Hobson also feared the effects of modernity on culture, on, on the human psyche. He thought there, there, that, that, that this, this horrible freak show was about to begin in human history because of modernization. Uh, and and what, what uh, uh, John Atkinson Hobson uh, presents in his work, uh, in, in many of his, of his books, uh, somewhat in imperialism as study as well, is an ardent defense of social democracy as the best way to ward off the, um, uh, the meretricious effects of modernity. And that book really brings Beard over to the progressive left. Um, a, another author who had a, um, a very important influence on Beard and in, 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 in developing his ideas about what we should be hoping for in society, what we should be wanting society to produce for a high civilization of original art and, and thought uh, to come out of it. 
um, uh, another very important figure in that uh, train of thinkers influencing Beard was Thurston Veblen. Uh, Beard thought that Thurston Veblen's absentee ownership and, and uh, his earlier book, uh, The Theory of the Leisure Class, that those were brilliant updates uh, uh, of, of John Ruskin's Unto This Last. Again, uh, Veblen was a man of the left, and so he, he took those criticisms and framed them in a social democratic, a more left-wing um, uh, uh, formulation, uh, uh, which, which Beard completely agreed with. Uh, the idea that, uh, that, that, that society um, must be developed with the idea that the people uh, are to be the beneficiaries of the political, social, economic system, not the oligarchs. That's what all three of those thinkers influencing Beard's social views held. Ruskin from a cons culturally conservative standpoint, and um, uh, uh, then um, uh, Hobson and Veblen from the more social democratic left-wing standpoint. But both of those traditions critique the modern status quo, the business civilization. This is why so many of Veblen's books have that that wording in, in, its, in their titles, business civil, civilization. His great critique of, of uh, the way universities were being organized, his classic book, The Higher Learning in America, 1918 by Veblen, the subtitle of which is a memorandum um, on uh, uh, the running of universities by businessmen. Uh, uh, they, they all, all three of those figures feeding into Beard's understanding of social criticism, cultural criticism, all three of them see the modern world developing in a way that is going to be um, uh, extremely negative uh, in, its, in its ultimate outcome. And Beard completely shares those fears and his books are, are defined by them and trying to come up with with, with, with answers to the problems that Ruskin, Hobson, and Veblen raise in their classic books.